is finally here. The new workhorse, the Apple Mac Mini M1 chip. Oh, I've been waiting for three weeks for this thing to arrive. So let's see how fast this computer really is and see if it's any good at video and photo editing. Now we all know how beautifully packaged Apple products are, so we don't need to do an unboxing, do we? Really? Okay, but just a quick one, five seconds, maybe 10. So my old computer was a MacBook Pro. It was about five years old and had one foot in the grave. It was getting increasingly slower and kept running out of memory, hard drive space, and the big editing programs like Lightroom, Photoshop, and DaVinci Resolve just kept grinding to a halt. So, the dream computer would have been an iMac Pro, but with prices starting at 5,000 pounds, I didn't want to have to remortgage the house. So with my budget limited to about 1,200 pounds, which doesn't take you very far, and spending more time at home and at my desk with my already fantastic photography monitor, I compromised the portability of the new MacBook Pro for the equivalent desktop Mac Mini with the same spec and performance, coming in at a whopping 600 pounds cheaper. Here are a few quick, interesting facts about the new M1 chip inside this little beauty or beast. It uses five nanometer technology. And to put that into context of something us regular humans understand, a human hair is approximately 100,000 nanometers thick, approximately. So if you split that human hair down the middle 20,000 times, now we're looking at five nanometers. Nano, nano which means Apple has found a way to fit 16 billion b -b billion transistors into their new M1 chip. <coughs> the chip has an eight core CPU, an eight core GPU, and unified memory all within the same chip, meaning it dramatically improves power efficiency and performance by up to 3.9 times faster video processing and 7.1 times faster image processing. Good news for people like me. So I upgraded to the 16 gigabytes of memory for this machine to meet the minimum requirements of my video editor and some other software that I use. And I stress minimum requirements. So let's see how it deals with some heavy photo and video editing and exporting. So I just wanted to show you what my computer is currently dealing with and the programs that I have open, which are my email, ScreenFlow, which is what I'm currently recording what's happening on my screen. I have DaVinci Resolve Video Editor, Photoshop with a high res image and a whole bunch of layers, and finally Lightroom. So first, let's head over to DaVinci Resolve and you can see my timeline here, which is full of 4K footage uh, with lots of cuts and overlaying clips. So I'll press play here and I'm gonna bring up the activity monitor so you can see what the CPU is doing and what pressure it's under. You can see the timeline is playing completely uninterrupted with no stuttering and the CPU is only using 25% of its resources. This section here has 23 individual mini clips and it sails through with no problem, even with the ScreenFlow software running at the same time. So let's add some basic color adjustments to the video to see if we can flummox the CPU. I'll choose this section of clips and add a grade consisting of some highlights and shadows and temperature adjustments, along with a touch of sharpening. Now let's play back the timeline and see if it's any good at video and photo editing. Now we all know how beautifully packaged Apple products are, so we don't need to do an unboxing, do we? Really? Still not a problem with no noticeable lag. So let's see how long it takes to export a video. I'll choose a portion of the timeline at 34 seconds long, including clips with adjustments. And let's export at 4K and 24 frames per second. So you can see the progress bar moving along quite happily, and the CPU is using less than a quarter of its potential, allowing you to still use your other programs like Photoshop. Something my old computer simply couldn't do. It was basically time to go and make the coffee and hang out the washing. So I'll just fast forward to the end and a grand total of 53 seconds to export 34 seconds of 4K footage. That's pretty decent speed. My old machine would take four or five times longer to do the same export and I definitely would not have been able to use ScreenFlow at the same time. So let's head over to Lightroom and import some fresh raw images at 50 megabytes each. 
Here's a little trip to Scotland I did last year. There are a hundred raw images which I'll import and also build smart previews for each image, which typically takes quite a bit of time to produce. Firstly, let's bring up a stopwatch so we can see how long these processes take. So the progress bar at the top here shows both the import and the smart preview build. I'm just going to bring up the monitor once again so we can see what kind of load the CPU is under. The CPU load is quite high for this process, but it is performing two tasks at once. But the import is going pretty quickly, and once that part is done, the CPU will free up some space. Let's fast forward to the end of the import, which completed at 44 seconds and the CPU has gone down to 60% now. And of course, I'm still running the screen capture software. Now let's skip to the end of the smart preview build, and that's completed in 2 minutes 36 seconds. Impressive stuff for 100 uncompressed raw images with smart previews. And if we head into the develop module and load each image, they focus in almost instantly with no delay between frames. Now let's do a quick color grade and synchronize the settings to the 26 other stag images. And if we watch the thumbnails along the bottom here, you'll see how fast they sync up by changing to black and white. That was about two and a half seconds. And finally, onto Photoshop. The zoom feature always used to lag on my old machine, forever waiting for it to catch up and render. Now it's really smooth and instantaneous. I'll just stamp all the layers to a single layer and convert that to a smart object, which should take a little bit of time. Now let's bring up the activity monitor once again to see how much resource is used and perform a high-res JPEG export. It's going to resize to the currently entered dimensions of 2000 pixels wide. So let's change the quality to 100% and the CPU just went up to about 30%. Now if we export and save to my desktop, the CPU is using about 25% power and that was about 3.5 seconds to export. So if you're performing a batch process of multiple images, you still have 70% of the processing power of this machine to perform other tasks and use different software. Right, let me say, I am super impressed with this machine, and for the price, it's a flipping steal. Why you would want to spend £5,000 when you can get a powerhouse like the Mac Mini M1 for £1,100 is a no-brainer. So that's it team, thanks for watching, I hope this was helpful. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more editing, photography, tips and tricks, and videography shenanigans. I don't know why I said that, it just came out.